Hey guys, Ivan here. So in this video, first things first, Keon Pearson won Tampa Pro 212 division. It was pretty obvious he deserved this win. I think this was his best package overall, combination of conditioning and fullness. But really, let's be honest, with these kind of genetics, you can't really go wrong too much. Carrot pushed him pretty good, Carrot probably brought better conditioning and maybe he outmuscled him in certain areas, but just the overall flaw of Kian's physique, the completeness, the genetics, the aesthetics, the, the shape, the structure, I mean this guy is such a genetic marble and when he brings it, when he is on, meaning when he is not completely off, he beats almost any 212 guy, so a well-deserved victory for him, he looked awesome, but I have to criticize him a little, there is one thing that I forgot to mention in my pre-judging video, this little bump on his shoulder. You see it? I'm gonna show you a couple of videos, you're gonna see it better, it was visible in almost every pose, especially the side poses, a little bump on his shoulder, I don't know what it was, I'm guessing he wasn't injecting gear a day before the show or whatever, usually guys stop injecting a week out or at least 4 days out and that is enough time for your body to recover if you had a bad shot, so I'm guessing he did something the day before or the day of the show, what could have he done in his shoulders, maybe an insult? in shot because he was carping up heavy, maybe some GH for the fullness, I honestly have no idea, whatever he did it showed, it looked bad, I hope he learned a lesson and that he won't repeat whatever he did here uh, for the Mr. Olympia, because now he's qualified for the Mr. Olympia and he doesn't want to look like this on the biggest stage in the world. You can see it here a little bit more clearly, so if you guys have any idea what this could be, tell me in the comment section down below. The other thing I wanted to mention, I mentioned it before, but I want to see him take care of this before the Mr. Olympia, controlling his midsection. This guy is known as the aesthetic guy. He has incredibly small waist. I don't want to see him have a bubble gut, you know, I don't want to see him get pregnant at the Mr. Olympia stage, we don't want to see that, and also as you can see the gap between his abs is probably increasing slowly, the same thing happened with Ronnie Coleman, so I don't want to see that happen to Keon, because he has amazing aesthetics, small waist, something like Ronnie Coleman used to have, and then later he lost those aesthetics mainly because of his uh, midsection, so hopefully Keon will pay attention to this and fix it in time. Anyways, Keon won Tampa Pro and got his Mr. Olympia qualification, he will go to the Mr. Olympia stage, this was a tough show, it was a lot of great competitors in the 212, so this victory is a pretty big deal and he's going to the Mr. Olympia, now he started working with his new coach Patrick Tour, so they brought probably the best package ever and I'm sure they will improve and bring something much better at the Mr. Olympia stage. How well can he do at the Mr. Olympia stage? That's a question for another video. Now let's talk about another 212 guy, a former 212 Mr. Olympia, who is probably a former 212 competitor actually, Sean Clarida. Sean Clarida looks ridiculous right now, look at the fullness and look at the conditioning at 205 pounds. So he's getting bigger and he looks really conditioned for the offseason and also he has insane level of roundness, fullness, graininess, you name it, this guy looks like a freak. And you guys know that he qualified for the Open Mr. Olympia and he has to choose which one he's gonna do, 212 or the Open and now we can be pretty sure that he chose, that he decided to do the Open. How do I know that? Well, you guys know that Sean Clarida is coached by Matt Jansen, Matt Jansen who owns Raw and Revive Nutrition, who are sponsoring Ian Valier, and Ian Valier told us this in a podcast. Let me show you, actually. If Lunsford is not going to make 212, would you just say, hey, as Kamal, I'm going to drop down to 212 and dominate? Well, yeah, Clarida, Clarida is doing the Open as well, so I mean, you have the, the two guys ahead of you. Sorry, Sean. Ian, um, did you say that Sean's doing the Open? Correct. That's on record? I believe so, yeah. Well, I know he qualified winning the Reno show, but mm -hmm. I, I thought he was going to try to capture the 212. You're saying he's going to go open. To my understanding, if he's qualified in both, his choice was to do the open. Yeah, I don't quote me on that, but I'm 92% I'm sure. There you go, guys. Sean Clarida, the giant killer, is coming to the open, and he's going to slay a couple of giants, that's for sure. Uh, Ian said, don't quote me on this, so I'm sorry, Ian. I have to quote him on this. 
Ian is very close to Matt Jensen, he used to coach him, now he's sponsoring him, also his brother-in-law Chris Bumstead is part owner of Raw, so you know, he knows these people and he heard something and that's why he's saying it. Uh, these guys actually talked about this, Ian and the other guys on their podcast, on Fuad's podcast, and by that time they weren't sure what Sean is gonna do, but apparently Ian overheard something in the meantime and he probably spilled some beans on this podcast, he probably didn't wanna do that. But it looks like Ian does that uh, quite often, actually, he just can't keep a secret. Anyways, take a look at his photo here, I mean, this is just funny. <laughs> look at how much bigger are Sergio and Regan, how much bigger they are than Sean. And even though they are bigger, Sean is simply more complete, he has better conditioning, obviously height or skeletal structure doesn't really matter that much. If Morgan Aced is not beating all these shorter guys than him and he comes shredded, but he doesn't win because he's not complete as the other guys, he is not as well-rounded as some of them are, then these guys like Sergio and Regan shouldn't be able to beat Sean Clarida, so he deserved this win and he's going to do some serious damage at the Mr. Olympia too. Another thing is he really knows how to pick, he really knows how to pick properly, like he exactly knows how to fill up to the max, to the point where he doesn't spill over, he comes super super full and he is also very very conditioned and he just has a lot of details, a great structure, unfortunately very small frame but that is what makes him a giant killer and I'm very excited to hear that he's actually gonna be doing the open. Unfortunately, Ian is only 92% sure, so it's not 100% certain, I don't think Sean announced anything yet, but we will find out soon enough, Mr. Olympia is approaching, and I'm sure he already knows what his plans are, I'm sure he knew that a long time ago, he just decided not to announce it, but I gotta say, I like this decision, I think it makes sense, for a guy that is so short, I think he's like 5 foot 1 or 5 foot 2, uh, to prove himself against the big guys, the taller guys, guys and actually beat a lot of them that would be a great achievement and i can't wait to actually see that happen what do you guys think about this since I mentioned peaking for the show, being dry and full, I gotta mention Roman Fritz real quick. I already showed you this physique update, but I wanna show you how he is carving up. Now, as you can see right here, he looks peeled, he looks shredded, but he looks really flat, really flat, and I was worried. Can this guy even carb up? I mean, you guys already heard that he's eating like 1700 grams of carbs in the off-season, and he doesn't get fat. So, how much carbs does he really need now that he's flat, that he depleted himself, that his body is suffering, how much carbs will he actually need to fill up? How many? 3000 grams a day? How many days? I'm really worried about Ron, I wanna see him do well, but can he even manage to fill up? How much food is it gonna require? Look, he has been doing this for a long time, he's not an amateur, he's a professional, I've seen a lot of guys that I compete with not manage to completely fill up and they look flat on the stage, but I don't know if Roman is gonna make that rookie mistake, now his body is a machine. It is not uh, just another body, it's a, it's, a, it's a really unique body, it's a furnace that burns through so many calories, so I hope he calculated this right and that he's going to get enough food in, and I was hoping he's gonna start his carb up 4, even 5 days out of a show, just to be sure, but no, he decided to start carbing up only 2 days out of a show, is that really gonna be enough? Can he eat enough food in 2 days to actually fill up? I hope so, I hope so. I'm gonna show you what he is eating, and it is a lot, it's definitely a lot, but I still think it's not gonna be enough. Take a look at this. Justin Compton, here in the back. And now we're getting ready to eat. We're two days out from the Tampa Pro, and we're starting our carb up a day early, because I'm super flat, as you can see. And this is about the food we're gonna take down tonight. So we got a couple cookies here, white chocolate macadamia. This is cereal, more cookies, three apple pies, a quarter ice cream, this coconut milk for the cereal, and then a bunch of cream of rice. I got the omelet here and this waffle. 
All right, so it's crazy how much he's gonna have to eat, and I'm really happy to see that he's eating some fat as well. He's eating bacon and eggs, so it's gonna take a lot of calories, not just carbs. He needs something to slow things down so his body doesn't just burn through the carbs super fast. He needs something more calorically dense. And as you saw, he is working with Justin Compton. He is helping him in this peak week, so I'm guessing these guys are gonna do a good job. And again, Roman is peeled to the shreds. He's shredded to the bone and once he completely fills up if he actually does that if he does that this guy is a wild card at tampa bro i'm telling you he spent a lot of time in the offseason trying to progress he was pushing his body to its limits with gear with food with training he does all he needed to do and i'm sure he made some progress i'm sure he made a lot of progress actually he did not get as big as i don't know big remy but he definitely made progress and even back then a couple of years ago when he competed as you can see right here it's tampa pro he still looked very good but now improved peeled and completely carved up filled up you know to the gills and as you can see he's eating a lot so i'm sure if he does that if he gets completely filled up and he's peeled as he is and he doesn't spill over which i don't think it's gonna happen it's way more likely for him to be flat than to spill over if he does peak properly he's going to look very good and i think he's going to surprise some people because he has a big frame i think he's like five foot eleven so he's not a short guy and again he improved he's peeled and he has Justin Compton who is a really good coach who knows a lot who's going to definitely help him get dry full and uh, I think he's going to be at his absolute best ever so I think this guy is going to be a wild card and he's probably going to surprise some people let's wait I'm really excited to see this Tampa Pro it's going to be an amazing show tomorrow Samson Dauda is turning into a Ronnie Coleman at least from the front he grew so much in the offseason that I'm thinking, what the hell was he waiting? He probably could have been this big five years ago at least. And now with Milo Sarchu pushing him to the max, he is improving like crazy. He is enormous right now. He's north of 320 right now in the offseason at the height of 5 foot 11. This guy is going to be a giant, a legit giant at a Mr. Olympia stage. Take a look at his side chest. Take a look at the arm and the chest. It really reminds me of Ronnie Coleman and also the side leg. <sighs> I have this guy in my top five at the Mr. Olympia. I don't know who's gonna fall out of the top five, but I can't imagine this physique not being in the top five. Again, if he peaks, if he's on, if he's conditioned, his back is improving. It's still not great, but if he's on with conditioning, with this newly added mass, with this kind of shape, symmetry, proportions, everything, it's going to be ridiculous. It's going to be insane. Samson Dauda is going to hurt a lot of people's feelings. He's going to smoke so many people. He looks like he's improving. Look at this. Look at how big he is. He's improving at a super fast rate. And there is still a lot of time until Mr. Olympia. So I don't know what he's... Look at, look at how big he got. And this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous, guys. This is probably... This is going to be the most improved bodybuilder for this year, for 2020. I just can't wait to see him finally on the stage. I really hope everything is gonna go well. And he's going to be conditioned. And he's going to peak properly. But with Milos Charger's guidance. And also considering that they worked before together. So Milos knows his body, yeah, he added new muscle, so this is a complete different animal now, he's probably gonna have to carb him up even more aggressively than before, but I, I, I'm sure, I'm confident that Milos is going to do a great job, and uh, the, the improvement that this guy made so far, and also the overall package that he brought at, the, at that Arnold Classic where he was fourth, also proved that these guys are really clicking well together, and this Mr. Olympia... This guy is definitely the wild card and he could surprise us all. He could, I don't want to say it, but I don't want to say that he could win the Mr. Olympia, but I wouldn't be too surprised because I feel like he made an incredible progress. And with his size, I don't see why he wouldn't be able to challenge Brandon Curry, Big Ramy, Hari Chupan, Nick Walker, Hunter Labrada. Why not? Why the hell not? Maybe his back is a little bit underwhelming, maybe it's not as big as everything else, but everybody has a little gap here and there. His happens to be his back a tiny little bit, and also his glutes usually doesn't come shredded, but if this improves enough, 
if he fixes this that it's not really a glaring weakness, where is the limit for Samson Dowd? Be my guest, tell me, where is his limit? Because I don't see it. Anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, guys, please give it a thumbs up. For more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.